Hi and welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. <laughs> As you can see, we're tying. Uh, you know, you, yeah, everyone has seen this fly. It's it's uh, it's the sandworm that uh, Kain Leo Lund has tied. And um, <laughs> when I saw the fly, I was like, "Oh, I want to try it!" And I was I spent the whole day trying to figure out this fly and how to tie it and uh, I have had contact with Karen and asked him uh, you know a couple of questions and uh, he said yeah go for it and I was like okay but um, how am I gonna make a tutorial this fly it's like uh, I mean I can tie the fly that's easy but how to tell you guys I'm gonna try okay so but you know, yeah. And as always, I have a link to skip the intro and uh, a link to my sponsor, Nudis Fiskutstyr, and to my Patreon page. So uh, you can go in and, and, and uh, check my social media and you know, go down in the description. And you will also find a full material list over the fly we're tying today. Okay, let's look at the materials. I have a feeling this, feeling this is gonna be a long one, okay? So for every measurement I got on this fly regarding to the, uh, the amount of materials and length, I am using the Arex uh, NS110 uh, in a size 6. So that's the hook we're using. And for the scud back, I have chosen a light olive. You can use other, I think Karen is using a brown one, but uh, if you want to use another color, use the color that matches the worms you have in your area. So I have this from Hairline, and this is, I can put up the size yeah, in, in the description. Light olive, I use light olive. And for the dubbing, I'm using baitfish dubbing. Here's one, this is a dark olive one, I like that. And we're also gonna have a white one, because the white one Will become kind of the contrast color. I'll, I'll show you in the fly. So we're gonna mix these two. And uh, for the underbody, I'm using UV2 Diamond Bright in an olive color. This is gonna shine through the scud back. So, so um, you, you know, here also you can choose another color. I'm using that color, and we're gonna use some uh, some wire. This is from Semperfly, just a March brown. This is 0.5 mm, very thick one. Uh, but you can also use uh, mono if you want, but I've done this, uh, <laughs> I've tied many of them, I find it easier. And this is this will also give the fly a little bit of weight, so it kind of sinks a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna use, I'm gonna use wire for this fly as a rib. And we're gonna use, uh, this is important, uh, because uh, when you're gonna make the tail, you need a thread that's very, you know, strong and uh, I'm using from uh, this is from Semperfly this is 120 denier this is an orange one a thick thread I haven't tried it with the regular tying thread uh, because you really have to spin up so you have need, need a thread that's strong this is just orange this is not going to show through so it doesn't matter the color doesn't matter strong thread and it's very nice to have a, a, a big scissor. I'm gonna put it down in the description. This is from Mark Petitchon. I have this for many, many, many years. But a, uh, a nice, sharp, big scissor, you need that. Uh, yeah, it will help you. And I have made some measurements. On a cardboard, on this cardboard, there is a 13 uh, pre-measured 13 centimeters and nine centimeters. I'm gonna show you how I use this, okay? <laughs> so these are the measurements for this fly and the fly is going to be about eight centimeters long yeah seven and a half eight eight ish yeah and i'm using a brown marker is there something else i don't think so shall we start i really need a cup i'm drinking tea for this one i, I i'm not going to get sweaty hands or anything so cheers let's try this fly And thank you, Karen. <laughs> I hope I hope you approve. I hope you approve of the fly. Okay, uh, let's go. So here's the Arix. I'm gonna make sure it's centered. We're gonna use our 
roll revise like that. Perfect. And we're going to start with the thread. In the middle, I'm going to make a dubbing loop. And this dubbing loop must be, must be 16 centimeters long. Yes, because we're going to fold the dubbing loop in two and everything. That's very important. So I'm just going to put my finger in here, double the thread. And I've made a cardboard, you know, with the 13 centimeters. I'm going to shake. That's 13, so I need a little bit more. This is very important. 13, and I have about two, perhaps a little bit more. Make it about 16 centimeters. So you have a lot to work on, okay? Yeah. So double it up, pull it back. And I like to have it on the top on the hook. Go back to the where the barb is, cross your thread and go forwards again. And now comes the fun part. <laughs> so here you can see I have a cardboard and I'm pre-measured 13 centimeters and 9. This is for the dubbing loop, this is for the dubbing loop for the body. So this is 13 centimeters and we're going to fold it in two and it's also going to shrink so the finished tail is going to be around 6 centimeters, okay? So we're going to start with the white and I'm going to pull out the fibers like that, pull it quite a lot. I take this hand. Make sure all the fibers are aligned. You've seen me done this before. Pull out a little bit, make it light, light, uh, nice and translucent. Put it on, pull out a little bit more, put it on the cardboard. Make sure the fibers are nice and aligned. And you really have to feel, you know, how do you think this is uh, enough? How you can see how, how translucent this is. And you know, this is kind of the thing you have to practice, but I hope you can see how little this is. This is so little, this is very thin, but I'm making sure it's 13 centimeters wide. And I'm just gonna put on a little bit more there. I can see it's kind of, that's nice, divide it, that's okay. Because uh, you don't want to put up too much, as I always say. And then I'm gonna pull out some of the dark olive. So pull out a good amount, like that, and we're gonna pull, align the fibers. I've shown this, I've shown you this many times. And pull it a little bit, just a little bit, and put it on the top. Again, pull out a little bit, almost the same. I like to put on the same amount as I did with the with the white one. And you see, I have a line in the middle. I'm kind of thinking this is my tying thread. So I'm making sure these are on the center. Okay. If I'm gonna grab, we're gonna grab this one later. Actually pretty soon, I'm happy there. Can you, I, I'm not sure you can see how much this is. This is very little, this is very translucent, okay. So we're gonna grab this one and that's also an exercise. <laughs> You can put this in two times. I'm grabbing it and putting it in. So I like to use, I like to use my palm like this. Can you see? And grab it like that and just, okay, are you ready? I'm gonna try. So I'm gonna try to grab it. I'm gonna go like that. If you push this down, this is gonna lift up the whole thing. So push down with your left hand, comb it a little bit up, grab it like that and hold your breath. Okay, are we ready? Here I come with my, you can see this is a lot and I'm gonna open up my dubbing loop. I'm gonna try to film this as best as I can. Put it in, lock the loop, push it up. Now we have all the fibers inside our dubbing loop and something important is now it's centered. Uh, I'm gonna check the uh, that it's 13 centimeters in a while, but I'm thinking it's important to push the materials all the way up there. Can you see all the way up in the notch up here? Okay, and I'm gonna make it thicker up here and a th little bit thinner down here because of the taper. And uh, when you fold it, uh, the thin part is coming up, you know, so this doesn't get too thick. So now. We have our dubbing loop. With our materials, I'm gonna check with my cardboard, the 13 centimeters, that is actually 13 centimeters. 
make sure it's all the way up there, you know, in the point there. Push it up, and then we're gonna spin it. Uh, I don't have a lot. Yeah, I'm gonna try. <laughs> and I'm spinning uh, the bobbin anti-clockwise. My thumb goes to the right. Oh, oh, my lord. This isn't easy for me, man. Wow. Let it go. Whew. Can you see? <laughs> I'll do my best. We'll make it. Okay. Spin it up a little bit and we're gonna brush. And don't brush it too much. Just brush a little bit. I'm gonna spin it up a little bit more. It's very important this is nice and hard, you know. And a lot of, lot of, you know, spin, spin, spin. Now it's nice to have this heavy, heavy um, dubbing twister. Okay, so we're gonna brush and I'm leaving a little core here. I don't want to see the thread. I'm leaving a little bit because, you know, the, the, the tail on a, on a worm is thick. So now comes the fun part. I think it's the fun part. Now we have make, made sure it's really, really nice and you have to put in a lot of uh, you know, spin it, spin it, spin it, till it falls on itself and brush it so it looks nice. Can you see? Can you see here? It's a little bit thick. It's perfect. And now we're going to fold it in two. Grab the middle. It's about there. Make sure this point is where at the perfect point there. And then we're going to spin it from from you know that way and it's going to spin up on itself you see and actually we're going to take a couple of turns this way that's why it's important to have a big dubbing loop it, it, it's very nice to have a 15 centimeters big dubbing loop okay and secure it a couple of nice wraps don't let go here do not let go i'm just going to snip it off let it drop Secure it, go back, and I'm gonna tie over this point to the barb. Whew. <laughs> yep, I'm doing my best. <laughs> so far, so good. And I'm gonna brush it. And we're gonna have a nice mix of olive and white dubbing. Now, I like to make this tail ready i mean um you know like to snip uh, uh, use the scissors and i'm gonna color it and everything before we make the rest of the flies i'm gonna brush it make sure you have every fiber so nothing is you know um caught up you know yeah brush 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 and the, and these synthetics fibers they they are strong okay so now it's just a tail, you know, but we want to uh, divide them in two. But if you pull on this, this is going to twist. So I'm going to try to, you know, you know, when you fish with this fly, this tail is going to spin up anyway. So, but I'm going to be going to comb it with our two thumbs like that. Divide the fibers. And I'm grabbing them underneath though with my fingers like that. Just gonna divide it. And I'm looking to see if there are same amount on each side. So it's a little gap there. I'm gonna comb over with my, with my thumb like that. This you have to practice. I can't tell you another way to do this. Uh, it's just one of the things it's almost impossible to show it on the camera. So, and I'm gonna pull it a little bit from each other like that. I'm gonna let it go. It's almost perfect. It has a little, little one, but the little, you know, it's gonna, it, it wants to go over that way, but that doesn't matter. And we're happy. Looks okay underneath. Yep. Perhaps some more over there, and some more over there. Yep. It's not. It, it, this is not the most important part, but. It's much easier to, to, to clip the length of the fibers by doing this. So I'm going to hold back here and now I'm going to use my 
beautiful, extremely nice scissor. And then we're gonna snip it off. And I'm going from, I mean, four millimeters to almost nothing. So I'm gonna snip off. This is also a practice. And underneath, And this scissor is freaking amazing. It's amazing. I can highly re recommend this scissors. And then we're gonna do the tail. Can you see? I hope you can see, I'm just gonna continue the taper on both sides. So it ends up in nothing. And now, there will always come out some fibers that are, you know, long. So I'm, I'm gonna continue to snip. But now we're gonna uh, um, use our marker. And I'm gonna hold the tail. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna flip over my cardboard and push the tail on the cardboard, like that. So now we're gonna, we're gonna use our ma marker. I'm gonna use the wide part of the marker and we're gonna brush the tips. This is gonna make the fly look so cool. Can you see? And we're gonna do the same underneath. I'm still holding the tail. Go under, pinch it on the cardboard and brush. This I had to figure out myself, how to show you guys how to do this. Whew. But as you see, I don't brush all the way into the core, halfway point almost. And the fly looks freaking awesome. And I always, I like to color the, the tail a little bit like that. And as you can see, it wants to rotate, but that's just how it is. When you, are you gonna take two casts and that's gonna happen anyways. Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna tie in the, this one, the scud back. And I've snipped out a couple of pieces and I've made a tip on it because we're gonna tie it in like this. So I've tied in a new thread, 6.0. I'm just gonna use a red, red one, doesn't matter. And as you can see, uh, we're gonna fold this forward. So I like to have, you know, I'm gonna tie it in the, in the middle so the, the edge there goes exactly back to this point. I'm gonna show you. Take a loose wrap and go back, back, all the way to your tie-in point, can you see? And that's there, make sure it's on the top. Perfect, because you know, this is very wide. And if you tie in the whole thing, this is gonna double up and it don't, it's almost impo uh, impossible <laughs> to pull out the fibers. So go forwards and we're gonna tie in one underneath. This is optional, if you don't want to do this, because this, uh, it's, uh, this fly, I don't think it's a beginner fly. <laughs> okay, G grab it, pull it back, make sure it's underneath. Go all the way back and forwards again. Yeah. So now we're gonna, we're gonna tie in some wire. I used the point 0.5, the thick one, and I'm gonna, Tie it in on the far side of the hook, far side of the hook, hook, and all the way back. Make sure you're all the way back, like that. And then we're gonna make a dubbing loop again. And this one, uh, it needs to be 12 centimeters, so 13 perhaps. I'm gonna check it again. Use my cardboard. We already measured 13 because the things we put in in this one is supposed to be nine centimeters. Just follow, this will work, work okay. So, okay, it's 13 and I have a couple of, uh, a little bit, just, uh, can be there's 13, double it. <sighs> Breathe, come on, let, we're gonna make this happen. All the way back, I'm gonna check it again. 13, perfect. And then put in your dubbing twister I'm gonna put it on my vise there and it's all ready. Make sure it's all the way back. And then we're gonna tie in some dubbing. 
And there I'm using Diamond Bright Olive, make an underbody. And this is gonna, it's not, not too thick. Just pull out some dubbing. And this dubbing is gonna show through, you know, this is kind of, and here you can use uh, other colors if you want. You can also use a transparent scud back and you can play with colors here. I, I want it olive. I'm just gonna make a nice even body. And it's so important to have at least two millimeters, maybe three, two to three millimeters space in the front because look at all the stuff we're gonna, you know, you're gonna come up with a dubbing loop with lots of fibers. We're gonna use a wire, we're gonna tie off so make sure, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you. I'm checking, there, you see? That's about nine thirds of thread. You absolutely need that. Make a half hitch because I'm gonna use my rollery vise. Rollery, yeah, rollery, rollery, yeah. And now we're gonna use the nine centimeters. I find that nine centimeters works perfect for this hook. If you have a smaller hook, you have to shorten in the measurements, okay? Yeah, so we're gonna start off with the white one, same technique as last time. I like to pull out a bunch and align the fibers best you can. And also here, do not overdo it. And I kind of, as I uh, said last time, I think, uh, I'm imagining that my, my dubbing loop is in the center. So I'm putting it in the center like that. You can see the arrows, that's kind of my dubbing loop. A little bit more. It's perfect weather for tying flies, you know. And we're so soon done with this playlist. Perfect, 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 perfect. And this is not gonna double. So in the back, I'm thinking this is in the back, so I'm gonna grab it and put it in the dubbing loop. So this is in the back of the fly, so I like to have it a little bit thicker here and try to make it a little bit thinner down here. Do as best you can. And some olive, I'm gonna put on some dark olive, pull out a good bunch, work with the fibers. and put it on the top. <laughs> wow, I've spent the whole day doing this thing. The tutorial, I mean. Yeah. So put on some olive and do not overdo it. Very important, as always. And I like to have a little bit more up there, a little bit less down there, and that's the center. And I'm gonna do the same as we did last time. I'm going to press down with this hand and grab it. I'm going to leave my scissor there and grab the whole thing. Do a little bit, comb it up and grab it with my palm like that. And I'm going to put this thing in our dubbing loop. So here's my dubbing. I have it in my hand. Open up the dubbing loop. Put it in. In the middle, best you can. Close it. And now, as uh, we did last time, I'm just gonna, if you have a roll device, it helps to kind of move the fly a little bit like that, because I'm gonna push this one all the way in. Nice and compact for the, when you pull out the fibers here afterwards, you like it to have a little bit thicker hair and a thinner up there. So like that, and I'm gonna check if it's nine centimeters on the cardboard. It's perfect. Yeah, you just have to believe me, <laughs> it's perfect. Uh, and it's a little bit thicker up here, a little bit thinner down there. So, spin it up, and I'm spinning my thumb to the right. Let it go. Spin, spin, spin. Be careful, now we're using tying thread, you know, so we don't over spin it, and the dubbing loop is gonna break. And here I'm gonna brush all the way so I can see the thread. Okay, so now we're gonna take one turn in the back. 
make sure you don't tie down your shell back. One turn in the back, and we're gonna have a little gap for every turn. So the you see, so the um, dubbing is you know showing through there. I'm gonna rib it and pull the fibers back. Pull it, pull it, pull it. And this is actually gonna. I have done this so many times, so I'm quite confident that this is gonna be perfect when it comes to the amount of fibers. I'm keeping the distance. We're coming to the point of no return <laughs> in the front, and yeah, perfect. Ah, oh. I'm looking forward to finish off the fly. <laughs> okay, so tie off the dubbing loop. It's all in the planning, 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 planning. That that is so important. So tie off the dubbing loop and see how important it was to have at least three millimeters in the front. Yeah, Couple of turns, pull this one back, tie over it, snip it off, and now comes the fun part. This is actually real fun. Now we're gonna divide, just put a half hitch so it doesn't come off. And now we're gonna divide the fibers. I'm just using my thumbs and my fingers like that, and we're just gonna go like that. You see? Du, 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 du. I hope you tie this fly and if you do, please tag me. This is a challenge. And Karen Leo Lund, he's known to make, you know, realistic flies. This is one of those flies. Realistic and difficult. You know the perfect Leo shrimp? Yeah, Karen, I remember the tutorial on that fly. Never again. <laughs> okay, so now we're dividing the fibers and when we're finished with that, we're gonna tie in our our scud, you know, uh, scud bags. Make sure it comes off nicely in the back like that. Pull it forward, don't pull it too hard and put your finger un underneath, support it. Do a uh, twist your bobbin to the right, do a slack turn. Lift it a little bit and pull it and take a couple of turns like that. And the same we're gonna do for the underneath. Where is it? There it is. Make sure it comes off nicely. You know, so it doesn't curl up. Again, supported. I'm gonna support it with my finger like that. Spin my bobbin. Couple of turns, two, three, four. And I like to pull this ones a little bit back like that, snip them off, like that, perfect, and then it's time for the wire. Now, I, there's a reason why I didn't snip off this one, I find it easier to, you know, rib it while they are long, and we come up underneath, and we're gonna divide, this you have to practice, can you see how I'm doing it? Make sure it doesn't fold over. This is, this fly is like, you know, it's one of those things you, okay, this evening, I'm gonna try this fly. This is not the fly I'm gonna sell. <laughs> it takes much, too much time. So, as you see, I'm ribbing, and when you're using the copper wire, this helps you because it does come loose again. And it's easier for me, yeah. And I think it looks okay, and I like it to sink a little bit. Pull, divide the fibers, go down. I really want to finish this lie, and it's gonna be amazing. Oh, perfect, perfect. And we're gonna go up with the wire. And I'm just gonna take a couple of turns over like that. Snip it off. Push it like I used to, you know, with the scuds and everything, like that. And I'm gonna finish off with a red head. And we're gonna varnish this fly. So now we need to use our scissors on this fly. And 
Don't make it too wide. I'm gonna use my scissor like that, hold it back there and the same length of the fibers as the tail. Can you see? Same length, wraps. Sneak this a little bit. These are not long. And the same down here. And I'm gonna snip off this part just so it looks good, you know, nice tapered. And then, <laughs> we're soon finished. We're gonna take our marker and I'm getting excited because I'm finished with this fly and I hope you try it. Mark it, let it dry. Underneath, come underneath, do the same. I really hope you try this fly out. I'm gonna look at the behind there and do the same. You can spend a lot of time fiddling around with this fly, make it look nice. And really, I'm gonna have three of those in the box. So I'm gonna take my time making it look amazing. Oh my lord, look at this fly. Woohoo! And the last thing, after this has dried, blow on it. I'm also gonna grease the cardboard and I'm gonna brush it a little bit. So the fibers don't stick together, you know? Oh, I'm done with this fly. It's so nice. Look at the fly, look at this fly. It's freaking awesome, and I'm just gonna burn off any other little fiber in front. Oh, that's nice. I'm gonna finish off with the varnish. And this fly is done. I made many of them today. I've spent the whole day doing this fly. Yeah. I'm gonna varnish it a couple of times up here. And play with the colors. I mean, you can make this fly in many different colors. But I think this is a perfect amount of fibers. Maybe this is a little bit, little bit wide. Let me snip it off. And after you've fished with it, you know, uh, it's gonna, it's gonna come out a few more fibers, you know. Look at it. Oh, it's so cool. It's so cool. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. No more. <laughs> oh, yay, I'm done. <laughs> Cheers. Mm. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you tried to tie this fly. And if you do, tag me on Instagram. I love to see how you tie it and how, which color you use and everything. And as always, a link to my sponsor, Nudis Fiskestyr. A link to my uh, to my Patreon page if you want to become a supporter. And uh, a link to my, you know, everything. Social media, the full materialist, everything. My brain is shot. I'm done. Oh my lord. <laughs> this has been a long one. Good luck with the fly. Uh, there's a couple more flies to do. So um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.